Hey guys, welcome back to another video. I know that Thursdays are usually reserved for market updates, but this one really made my blood boil and I decided to put this video out first and tomorrow on Friday, I will have a market update for you. So this one has to do with Carrier 411. You know, those freight guard reports that can absolutely destroy uh, a carrier's reputation and destroy their business altogether. Well, yeah, there are some developments with Carrier 411 and I would love to to hear your guys' reaction to this because, again, this made my blood boil. So let's chat about it. Ready? Let's go! All right, so first and foremost, for those of you who might be unfamiliar with what Carrier 411 or a freight guard report is, let me give you a very quick rundown. Carrier 411 is a platform that is meant to be used by brokers, which is used kind of like a vetting tool for carriers to make sure that the broker is working with a safe carrier. Now, this platform basically gives a voice to the brokers to leave reviews about the carriers that they have worked with and also gives them the ability to file a freight guard report. Now, a freight guard report is basically a warning to other brokers that this carrier is either a scammer or a fraud or basically is unsafe to work with. Now, on the surface of it, when you hear me talking about it, it doesn't sound like anything crazy. It's just a vetting tool, right? We live in a world which is all about reviews, but there are significant issues with the system. Number one, carriers are not allowed on Carrier 411. If a carrier receives a freight guard and tries to call Carrier 411, that number is going to be blocked. You will not be able to talk to anybody at Carrier 411. Number two, brokers that leave reviews are not vetted for truthfulness when it comes to those reviews. And as Overdrive, states, and I quote, Carrier 411 enjoys protections under Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act of 1996, which protects online platforms from liability against users' content. So basically, a broker can post a review that is a complete lie about a carrier, and the carrier has no way to remove it except for calling the broker and begging them to take that review down. Number three, many brokers, a majority of brokers use carrier 411 to vet their carriers, which means that regardless of whether a review is truthful or not, these carriers are losing business because other brokers are reading these reviews without vetting it for truthfulness and basically not giving those carriers loads. This basically means that a freight guard report, regardless of whether it's truthful or not, has the power to destroy a carrier or their business without the carrier being able to to actually defend himself. Now, the question is, is there any way a carrier can defend themselves from this freight guard report? Well, yes, usually a carrier has to either beg the broker to take down the review or hire an attorney to take down that review or go through the court system. Now, just to give you an idea of how Carrier 411 can be used to destroy a carrier's business, let me give you an example that happened in 2022. In 2022, there was a carrier who agreed to haul a load for a broker called High Plain Logistics. Now, this load was scheduled to be picked up at 2 p.m. Central Time, but the broker started calling the driver at 7.30 a.m. Central Time with six and a half hours to go before the pickup. The driver was on his 10 hour break. He was sleeping. So when the broker called, the driver hung up on him. Now the broker freaked out and got mad that the driver hung up on him six and a half hours before pickup time. And this broker shot the driver a text and I'm going to read it verbatim. You know what? You just lost your load to Cleveland a-hole. Very nice. Now, before the carrier, the actual carrier even gets to the office because they were on the West Coast, the broker has a full on meltdown and posts a freight guard report. Now he lists the following, no show, no call, canceled after accepting load, fraudulent activity, unethical and deceptive business practices. And he also added a common saying that this carrier is a double broker. 
all because the driver was on his 10 hour break and hung up the phone on the broker. Now, long story short, this broker refused to take down the review until of course the court ordered them to do so. Thank God for the court system because the court found the broker guilty of defamation and interferences with business and awarded the carrier $208,000 in damages as well as $250,000 in punitive damages. Now, apparently the broker didn't even defend himself in court. They just kind of said, yeah, the carrier is right in this case. But just think about the amount of time it took to get to the courts, right? And the amount of time wasted, the amount of business lost, all because a broker lied on the review. And this gets me to my next point. As of October, there are new developments in Carrier 411. The CEO, Darren Brewer, quietly made major changes to the platform without even telling his customers. One of the big ones is the fact that a freight guard report is permanent after 72 hours with no way to take it down. So basically, if you are not able to get hold of the broker to take down that review within 72 hours, you are stuck with that review on your profile, regardless of whether it is truthful or a lie. And this means that you are at a risk of completely losing your income in this industry. Now this weasel of a CEO, and I refuse to repeat his name, he's protected by section 230. And basically it gives him immunity from this crap. But what he ended up doing is he ended up screwing not only carriers, but his own clients, the brokers. Why? Well, let's look at the 2022 case. The carrier effectively made half a million dollars because of a review that was untruthful that was left by the broker in carrier 411. But what happens when a review is impossible to take down? Now, one attorney says, and I quote, essentially there would be no way to stop the bleeding in the case of punitive damages. And he continues to say, I have advised all my broker clients to reevaluate submitting freight guard using carrier 411 in light of the changes on the platform. These changes present a material increase in liability exposure risk for brokers. In short, if a freight guard is posted by you or someone on behalf of your brokerage, you are stuck with it as well as the consequences. But the 72 hour period is not the only thing that changed on carrier 411. Now there are additional categories that allow brokers to post freight guards. Now I'm not going to list all of them. I'm just going to list the top ones. Number one, a carrier employing anyone outside the US or Canada. So basically if you are a carrier who has a dispatcher that's based somewhere else, a lot of carriers do that, about 50%, there is a place for you on freight guard. Number two, which you guys are gonna like, if you file a claim against the broker for non-payment, guess what? The broker can file a freight guard against you. Number three, and this one is just amazing. If you retaliate against the broker for putting a freight guard on you and your company, there's going to be another freight guard report against you. Number four, if you refuse to track or stopped tracking, freight guard. And number five, if God forbid you are demanding additional payment, and I'm going to quote this from carrier 411 right now, it may include demanding unexpected fees, claiming unwarranted detention or charges or tonu, alleging the load was heavier or larger than specified, which happens constantly or any other demands for additional payment. If that happens, Freight guard. If you haven't been able to tell yet, my blood definitely is boiling and I'm having a hard time expressing myself in a professional way. Now, in terms of a vetting tool, I have nothing against a vetting tool. Businesses use it, it's fine. But when it's a vetting tool that doesn't give both parties a voice, doesn't check for misinformation and makes reviews permanent, which could destroy someone else's business for no reason, yeah, that is a different ball game. What do you guys think? I'm really curious to hear your opinions. Anyway, thank you so much for joining and watching today. Tomorrow I'll have a market update for you guys, but yeah, this one just, it pissed me off. Hoping you have a fantastic rest of your week. Happy Thursday, and I will see you tomorrow.